Welcome to the T Row Show. Transmitting truth. One week at a time. Welcome to the 20th episode of the T Row Show. This is your host, Keith. We got Tony and Stu, and we have a guest, Tom, on. Say hello, guys. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay, we were on the, uh, I think it was uh, Brian Parker's call uh, Sunday, we announced that we were going to talk about how people became a U.S. citizen today. And it happened in a way that a lot of people don't realize. But Tom, you've got an a, a announcement to make if you'd like to meet Tom. Tom's our Secretary of State. Go ahead. All right, well, uh, I just want to let everybody know that we're going to be having a presentation up at Pork Fest this year. Uh, that is in June. 21st to the 25th, and that's going to be at Rogers Campground in Lancaster, New Hampshire. If anybody wants to attend there, they can attend and they can meet us up there, and we will be having a presence there. So if you have the opportunity to be able to be up there, we'll be there. Yeah, and that's, that's uh, not pork as in P-O-R-K. It's called the Porcupine Fest. So if you're looking for it on the Internet, that's what it is, called Porcupine Fest. It's also part of the Free State Project. So if anybody looks at the Free State Project of New Hampshire, they'll know what that is. So if anybody wants to meet us, that's where we'll be. And Thank you. If, yep. And if um, um, so that way you can see people face to face. A lot of uh, people complain that our government, uh, you know, we don't ever see anybody. Well, we're all spread out all over the country. That's why. And we all meet up on, um, uh, on uh, calls and, and we all do business that way. We do business basically through the Internet. <laughs> So that's why, that's why, because we're all spread out all over the place. All right, today uh, we announced on the other program, it was uh, uh, Tactical Sovereignty. We were on that, we were on that program. We were invited on there to just come take, uh, to talk to people. And we mentioned that we were going to be talking about how you became a U.S. citizen. And that is what we're going to talk about today. Now, how you, how it happened to you, you had this the information you're about to get on this program, you're going, you have never heard before. We know that for a fact. No one's really ever heard of, uh, about this before. And in order to understand how you became a U.S. citizen, you have to understand what a declaration is. If you don't understand that, you're not going to understand any, uh, any of the rest of what's, uh, what happened to you. So you'll notice that there's a, <clears throat> I'll just go from, there's a, keep this in mind, that there's a United States Constitution and a Constitution of the United States. But for some reason, there's uh, the United States Constitution, there's nothing written there. There's only, it, it, it refers back to the Constitution of the United States. Then people, the, because it messes with the way they think, you go, oh, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. And it's, and it's not. It has nothing really to do with that. We keep mentioning people are stateless over and over and over again. And there's a good reason why we keep saying that. And today we're going to explain to you what we're talking about. So everybody remembers even the people that don't know anything about history remember the Declaration of 1776, the Declaration of Independence. It keeps going on and on and on about that particular uh, document. There's a reason why. Over and over and over again, that's all you hear. Declaration of Indep Independence, Declaration of Independence. Now, what you have to realize is you have to go through Declaration of Independence, but there's a document they're not mentioning, which is the Articles of Association. That was done before the Declaration of Independence, which is more important document than the Declaration of Independence was. There was a way that they had to change the colonies into independent state. So they had to write up an Articles of Association, which created a union. The Articles of Association that was written before the Declaration of Independence were the rules of the union. Everybody get that? Yeah, that rules makes sense. Of the union. Okay. okay. Now, how did the General Post Office come about? Well, first of all, the general post, you had to create an obligation and an obligation of delivery. So how do you change the general post office of the colonies into a general post office for independent states? First, you have to create your articles of association. Then they did a declaration of independence. A declaration is a vehicle of delivery, like a cigarette. A cigarette's a vehicle. It, it, it delivers the nicotine to the body. That's all it does. That's what it's there for. A declaration is a vehicle. 
It's a way to move something. So the colonists who were subjects of the king had to write a declaration to deliver themselves from a colony and subjects to independent states and nationals. They were making themselves declared goods. They delivered them. No, they had to deliver their intangible property. See, they had intangible property to the title of subject and all the titles that the, uh, uh, that, uh, the king at the time gave them. And they had to transfer that intangible property by delivery to a different status. Make sense? Yeah, otherwise the um, Declaration of Independence wouldn't be worth anything if they didn't have anything to transfer anything to. Exactly. They had to go from one venue to another. And venue is basically falls under surveys. So everybody reads the Declaration of Independence and they pledge their life and liberty and blood to themselves or to each other and all that. They, they read all that, but they have no idea what a declaration is, what it's for. It's a delivery document. Well, that's what I meant, that it's uh, declared goods, because if you're going to mail something from one country to another, you have to fill out that uh, declared goods form or what, what it is that you're declaring is contained in there that's going from one nation to another. Exactly. So we have this thing that everybody keeps coming out with, and they say, well, the general post office LDC was in Belize, and therefore, how does it have jurisdiction here and everything else? You know why they say that? They have no clue what we were doing. And we didn't tell anybody what we were doing. And it was basically none of their business. So how could you be the original general post office and blah, 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 you know, it goes on and on like that, okay? And the reason why we were able to, to uh, uh, claim the original general post office under, that was uh, Benjamin Franklin was the first postmaster general is because Ebenezer Hazard never had a successor. So it was abandoned. So we went back and claimed it the original general post office. And we claimed it, waited 90 days and rock and rolled on it. It still serves the public and everything else. We just claimed it. There was, it was a population there, somebody to operate the general post office. So every time we hear that, it, it just shake your head. You know, it's like, man, you just don't understand. You don't get it. We're not here to uh, glorify ourselves. We're not here to feed our egos or anything like that. It just had to happen. We had to do it. So in order to get the general post office to start accepting mail, because we couldn't get, uh, they had the UPU treaty locked down with this company and with the, uh, um, uh, with the uh, UP, or I'm sorry, the United Nations. <clears throat> we had to get it operating. So we created a franchise in Belize, the General Post Office LDC. It was a limited duration company. So every time somebody did a resident declaration, we would move their estate or deliver their estate to General Post Office LDC and then deliver it back to this general post office, to the one of 1775, to go through the United States of America back to the States of the Union. That's why we said we had to get the general post office recognized. We just didn't explain the whole thing. Didn't have to. Didn't really care whether anybody understood what we were doing. So somebody that, that, that declared uh, residency, okay, with the United States of America and the original Union, we delivered it down there, offshore, got it offshore, got it out of the United Nations and out from under the grid and then brought it back in into the States of the Union and handed it back to the individual as they, they had it as trustee for their estate. It was a great plan, but it got, it, 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 uh, it, it wore itself out because we, we saw NAT codes. That's natural area codes. And it was being, it's run by the, um, uh, the NAC society <clears throat> and they found a way to do it to do what we were talking about, uh, just with claiming a NAC code. So all we're doing is, is when you declare residency, we've got to pull you, pull your estate or your name, okay, your all cap name, uh, which is your estate, it's your commerce, it's your person, and blah, 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 blah. We have to pull it out of all political boundaries, deliver it. The post office, general post office accepts a delivery, and then you're able to get a general delivery or a general post address along with the NAC code. And that's all we're doing. 
a lot of people don't understand surveys. They don't understand what, uh, what that is. They just think, well, that's foreign, so you guys are a fake. Absolutely not true. We just know how to get you out of the, uh, out of the mess. And that's why by declaration. A declaration is a delivery document. It shows what the destination is. And the only way to do that is to redefine your person and correct the record. So keep in mind that the Declaration of Independence, <clears throat> I don't really know the document, it would be a, uh, it would be a uh, um, I don't know, people will call it a bill of lading, but it really isn't. It's a, um, it's a, it's a, uh, a order of delivery. We can put it that way. It orders the general post office to deliver your person. In the declaration, you claim a NAC code. You delivered, it was an order to the general post office to deliver your person to the NAC code. Since the general post office is connected to the NAC code, it receives your person and then gives it a general post or general post off, a, a general delivery address. All the general postmasters get general post uh, uh, office boxes. That's a legal way to do things. And there's nothing illegal or unlawful about delivering things. It's a trust, uh, it's a trust agreement. You're, gi you're giving your person by declaration to, uh, or to be delivered to a NAC code outside of any political boundaries, outside of the um, uh, UPU, outside of the federal zone, outside of any, everything. The general post office receives that delivery, puts it on a map, and then hands it back through to the states of the union. There's no fraud about that. No, it's not illegal. And we have a right to do it. So we see this thing called de declaration of political status. That's, it's total garbage. Complete garbage. If you're going to do a declaration of what they call political status, all that is is if you uh, are moving from the Democrats to the Republicans or some other type of political party. So you tell the head of, the, of one party, you do a declaration to deliver your political status to another political party. That's, that's it. Your intangible property to your vote is being transferred somewhere else. And it's all done through the post office. That's why you go to the post office for voters registration to deliver your intangible property to your vote to another political party or to a political party. And if you want to switch those political parties, you can go down to the post office, do another declaration by transferring your intangible property from the Democratic Party to the Republican Party or to the North American National Party or to wherever you want to go. That's a declaration of status or political status, if you want to call it that. The ones that we see going around on the internet, they're talking about religion. They're talking about their status, that they're holier than thou, um, that they're living beings. So there's another religious thing again. Uh, they're talking about uh, some status over here. Over it, it doesn't do anything. It's a completely null and void document. Because you didn't form a political party. If you want to form a political party, you can form one. You have to publish it and all this other stuff. Create a platform and all that. You don't have to register it anywhere. Just publish it. And once that's a, that, uh, that is uh, uh, in existence, you can tell another political party that I'm, I'm transferring by declaration my intangible property over to another political party. Have a nice day. The political party that is doing the transfer through the post office, has no say in the matter. It's absolute. That's why declarations are absolute. And that's where the post office and the general post office outrank all political parties. They cannot override declarations, which are nothing more than orders to deliver something. So we, we uh, once, once your person is delivered, okay, it's delivered into the States of the Union, you can either start a political party, or you can join the North American National Party, which means that you have to have a chapter 
of the North American National Party because internationally, since all states are separate independent states, you have to have a chapter in there and you have your own elections under the same name. It's already been established and under the same platform. However, the North American National Party for the government of the United States of America does not vote in your state uh, elections. Nobody a part of that political party that's not a part of your chapter uh, has a vote there because it's an independent state. But you can use it as a franchise. It's not a problem. It's already established. We have no issues with that. So all it would be would be state of Florida, North American National Party or North American National Party hyphen SOF, state of Florida. You can do it any way you want. It, it, it doesn't matter as long as it's a, uh, as there's a, uh, there's a identifier to identify who, where, where that location is. So how did you become a U.S. citizen? First of all, they had a constitution called Constitution of the United States. If you go onto any website and look for the Constitution or the, uh, the United States Constitution, it doesn't exist anywhere. It refers to the, uh, uh, the Constitution of the United States. It always does that. And keep in mind, with this government, we're under the Articles of Confederation. We're just doing this for translation purposes to so understand where we're coming from. So you can look for United States Constitution refers to Constitution of the United States. So somebody's doing some what? Some yin and yang thing here. Oppositions. Dark, light, the whole thing. So the reason why the Constitution of the United States doesn't seem to exist is because that's under the charter of the, uh, the United Nations. There's not really, we, uh, so communists do this, okay? Communists are very good at doing this. <clears throat> What they do is they take the good stuff and all the rights and then hinder everybody else. They create something that's fictional and crap and give that to everyone else and then they keep all, all the good stuff. That's how they operate. They always have operated that way. They don't try to overpower you on an equal playing field. They hinder their opposition, wound their opposition, and then take advantage of the wound. It's a, it's a basic tactic uh, used by communists that, since the, begin, the beginning or the inception of communism. And that tells you right there that the people that created communism are, are extremely weak. They're weak people. Always have been. They can't compete in a capitalistic society. They can't compete anywhere because they suck at what they do. So what they have to do is hinder those that are better than them so that they can beat them and make them appear as if they're better than, uh, uh, but, then they're, but they're really not. And then they sugarcoat it as being good for the community. Yeah, to make themselves the heroes. There's plenty of movies about it, uh, watching what communists do. It's always the weak, pathetic guy that has no talent and everything else that uh, is uh, hinders the good guy who's strong and can do things and uh, so that they can look better and come in as a hero. You're exactly right. Happens all the time. So what we have here is a, um, is a failure to communicate between the people and their so-called government. The, it's a communist. So this is what happened, folks. What communists do is they put everything in place before they're about to deliver you. They change definitions. So definition of live birth, product of human conception, boom, product. People read that, I'm not a product. Well, okay, all good and well, that's the definition. Product of human conception. Now we know something's afoot. We know something's getting ready to happen when they start messing around with definitions. When they start messing with definitions like, uh, what's a declaration? 
Definition of declaration. To declare something. Seriously? You're going to define the word with the word? So you know that that's the wrong definition. They're not really going to explain what that is. And if you go look at all the definitions, you'll notice that they, they um, oh, what's a resident? A resident of a town. That's what a resident is? That's, <laughs> it's hilarious to watch their definitions because they change them to a point where people don't understand what the hell it is. You're defining a word with a word. What's the color? Well, blue? What's the <laughs> definition of blue? It's something that's blue. Go ahead, Tom. Tom. It's not like you can read their articles anyway because they keep them private. So you don't even know what they're defining most of the stuff as anyway. If you go into a court, you have no idea what the articles say that they have, they have uh, put in place for the bar. You're not going to be able to see those because you're not a voting member. Exactly. So they can make any definition they want. It doesn't make any difference. As long as it wasn't written by you, it's got nothing to do with you anyway. But remember, Tom, the color blue, the definition of blue is just something that's blue. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's important to know. I mean, <laughs> describe that to a blind man. I don't think it's going to work very well. <laughs> And Try to describe a color to a blind man. It just doesn't work. <laughs> don't forget that blue also means sky. Right. <laughs> oh, and water, too. Don't forget about water. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, not around here. It's all, that's the definition of brown or black here, around here. <laughs> I, what, I, what I was getting at, though, is if you go into court and you say, well, I'm a living man. Uh, well, I, I, I wouldn't even put it past them in their articles somewhere they have living man means corporation or living man means person. Just like individual means person. So it, it's a moot point. You can't. What are you going to go with? Or you're a product of human conception. So now you're a product. Oh, yeah, that too. But you'd never know it because they have their own articles. It's, it's hilarious to watch some of the stuff we see. It's like watching a show. You might as well just get your popcorn and Coke out and watch it. It's, it's, it's a bunch of people that believe they're, they're deceiving other people. And when they think they're deceiving them, they get all powerful. You know, they get all arrogant and everything. Yeah, we're this and we're superior because we're smarter and blah, blah, blah. And you're watching this go on and it's just like watching a show. It's a movie more than anything else, it's entertaining to watch what they do. So, you know, uh, uh, I'm, a, I'm a living being. Okay, great, wonderful, living being. Now you're, you're, you fall into the definition of live birth. You're a product of human conception. Now you're a product. We can put that together. But we're not going to spend all of our days trying to figure out all of the uh, little things that they put together because it's all just sick. There's some extremely sick people doing that, screwing around with other people's lives. And the main reason is, is because they're rich. They've conquered everything in the world. They've conquered the world and therefore they're bored. So let's play with people like toys. They treat people like toys. They play with them. Uh, let's see if we can do this. There's a bet on it. You know, let's see if we can get them all to believe this. Or if we, let's see if we can get them all to believe that. We'll, we'll have a bet on. We'll bet a dollar. I believe we can make it happen. And they compete with each other, and just the the the, the world is a game to them. It says in scripture, life is not a game. You don't sit and play like that. You don't do that. If you do that, what comes around goes around. That's how it operates. So, what is a declaration? It's an order for delivery. A delivery of something, whether it be tangible or intangible property. Have uh, anybody that's ever come into customs, what do they ask? Do you have anything to declare? Do you have anything to declare? Are you moving anything? Are you delivering anything? Which falls under general post office jurisdiction. Declaration is an order for delivery from the general post office. If you put a stamp on something, that's a declaration. That's an order, an intention. You've been paid, here's the order, go deliver, it's declared. 
you've declared that that's the location, you declare where the location's coming from, but no one ever explains this to you in high school or middle school or, or elementary school. We have it on the on GPEX. Are you having uh, some, only one guy's done it right, uh, actually one guy's done that right. He came in and fill out the customs form, which is, did you have anything to declare? He put everything in as, uh, as what he was uh, going to sell and he declared it. We said, thank you, it's delivered. That's it, it's over. It's not really that difficult, there's nothing wrong. Nobody's doing anything nefarious. It is what it is. So that's why we always say resident declaration. It's an order for, from the individual to deliver your person back to the States of the Union. Now, how did you get into this, uh, 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 into the situation you were in, you were in outside of the States of the Union. That's the whole thing. How did all this happen? Well, folks, it happened by declaration. It was just done through a, a combination of power of attorney, representative, and declaration. So the communists got everything in place. They got rid of the, uh, the, the, the Treasury Seal of North America. They went off the Brent, uh, uh, Brent Woods Agreement, went off gold system. In the middle of that, they were throwing a war in, in there, which was uh, Vietnam War, working off of the 1933 pledge by, uh, by uh, Roosevelt. And if you watch our programs and the whole series of our programs, everything I'm saying is all, to, uh, all uh, explained in uh, every part of the series of broadcasts that we have. So they did a uh, uh, they um, uh, they did the pledge 1933 pledge May uh, May fifth May seventh yeah May fifth pledging uh, uh, everything that you have to a new world order by the way then they had to put in the United Nations Charter that was a uh, um, that was a part of the Law of Nations. Then they had to come in and put in the 1948 uh, Bar Treaty, making the Bar Attorneys representatives of the UN. Then they had to rewrite the immigration naturalization laws under US citizen. Okay, they did all that, but that all that wasn't valid yet. Then they had to come in with the National Education Act or Emergency National Education Act. Uh, get everybody to so that they could establish credit cards for people and put them in massive student debt and all this other junk. Then uh, uh, JFK re was refusing it, wanting to go back to the uh, gold and silver standard, so they whacked him. Started a Vietnam War, so Rockefeller could open up a um, uh, open up a uh, oil rig, uh, oil uh, refinery in North uh, Vietnam. It goes on and on. <clears throat> and then they came in and in 1966, they did a lot of stuff they shouldn't have done. We, it's, 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 it's too long uh, to go through that. Then they, then they went off the Brent, uh, Bretton Woods Agreement and then they did what? So what was the last thing they did in 1976? Declaration of Interdependence. Interdependence. Yep. That's when you were delivered to the New World Order, and that's when they had so-called validified or made it valid that you were a U.S. citizen. And it was done by what party? The Democratic Party, which is what? The Communist Party. And then the cherry on top is that they fraudulently got the mother to transfer intangible property rights over to the state. Over to the state, which gave the communist state a permanent population. So they had to get rid of the postal department in 1971 and make it a USPS private company so they could do all this privately and claim that they had the right to contract. So that's how it changed from citizen of the United States to US citizen. It was done over an 80 year period 
so slow, nobody figured it out. And in order to protect the judges from being um, uh, sued for treason or whatever it was they wanted to call it, they had to put them under the charter of the judges from a completely foreign company uh, or country, which was Roma, Italy, which just happens to be a communist country. Vatican, communist city, state. They're communists. Everything that um, uh, that uh, Francis says, it's all communist rhetoric BS. He's a pure communist. So what are the Jesuits? A communist uh, organization. They have nothing to do with religion. They're just hiding behind religion. That's all it is. It's, it's nothing more to it. So they declared you, it was a delivery thing, so that everybody was, de was delivered to the USPS federal zone and blah, 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 blah. The only way out is another order, another declaration. And by the way, we don't use the General Post Office LDC anymore. We haven't kept that up. When, we, when the NAC codes came in, they were, uh, it was a much quicker way of doing it. And it was more of an individual thing and it didn't cause confusion because people didn't understand what we were doing. So the terms and conditions of the NAC society are right up to uh, right dead on to what we were actually trying to accomplish. And if you guys want to know why Stu isn't talking is because he has heavy rain over there. <laughs> so he doesn't want to interfere. So he's actually on the call or on the show today. Anybody have anything to add? I did want to add that, you know, since you brought up the interdependence of 1976, I would like to uh, let the listeners know that they can object and condemn the Declaration of Interdependence of 1976 by going to the Reign of the Heaven Society post. And you can uh, type in Declaration of Interdependence in the search bar and it'll bring up that uh, that portion where you can actually uh, sign it and it goes on record. Yeah, it's a uh, rain the heavens.com and we do have an actual link to it. It's right up there at the top bar. I put a link directly to it so they don't have to look for it. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, I see it. Thank you. Okay. okay. And they can, uh, they sign it electronically sign it online, perfectly legal. It is an actual, uh, um, objection and condemnation of it. They did not, folks, they did not have the right to declare people products and deliver them to a completely different United States Constitution that is, doesn't even exist. And if it doesn't exist, what does it fall back to? The Charter of the, uh, of the United Nations. And have the right to do that. So if you feel torted, yeah, that's how you were torted. You were you were delivered and all that. You see, it, when you're delivering a product, it's not kidnapping because it's not a person. It's not people. You're you're th that's how they got around the whole trafficking thing by messing around with the definitions. And if they can get you to believe it, then they they're free and clear of human trafficking. That's how it operates. Yeah, that's exactly how it operates. I was going to say that. Exactly. They, you, got it, you got it pegged perfectly. They, they come up with the brainstorm. They document it. They rehash it in their think tanks. They circulate the papers. It takes a decade, but then they unroll it on the people. And you go to public school, you don't learn anything. You spend time as an adult watching football games, not paying attention to what's happening. Yet the, you know, the grass continues to grow. And the next thing you know, you got a jungle. Yeah. Well, a perfect example of that would be in the courtroom. You got your lawyer that puts you aside and he says, all right, I'll tell you what. We've made a deal here with the judge. You won't have to do any time. Just sign this documentation. You'll have to do probation for five years. You'll have to take drug tests. You'll have to go through uh, anger management, whatever the case may be. It doesn't make any difference. You know, even with, you know, child services, the same thing. So they'll say you have to go through all these hoops and everything, but you won't get any jail time. So, of course, you know, you're like, I don't want jail time. So 
I guess I'll sign the document. So you sign the document and then you go before the judge and the judge says, I have two questions they ask you before we proceed. One question is, he'll come up and say, were you threatened in any way? No, your honor. Well, you were just threatened with jail time. So there's one of them. Then the other one was, they ask you if you were um, persuaded or... Uh, um, voluntary, yeah. They always yeah. were voluntary. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and of course you go, no, your honor. No. But okay, so you weren't threatened. You weren't coerced in any way, but everything's okay. So that right there dismisses any case against them for any wrongly do, wrongdoing because you've just volunteered yourself and you've also said that they didn't do anything wrong to you. And keep in mind, folks, now this is, this is something that a lot of people don't, under, don't, don't know. Probation falls under the executive branch of the Virginia company, which you know today as the president of the United States, which was never ratified by Congress. They weren't even convened when probation came into play, but that's what communists do. They go around the rules. They're anti-government, anti-government. That's what they do. So it wasn't even passed. Probation doesn't even exist. So he says, okay, now, now, Tom, let's go back to that again. We're going to throw you in a box, okay, unless you accept something that doesn't exist. <laughs> That's what... And then, and then you say, oh, well, I don't follow you under your jurisdiction. And they say, well, where were you born? Right. And they didn't tell you that they, they switched all the surveys under these constitutions that they created out of thin air that they said the people voted for. Who were the people? The communists. They all voted to switch the constitutions and move, like, okay, the state of Washington, check this out. On their survey, they moved everything over one inch. So they picked up the whole state on paper, moved it over one inch, and set it back down again. And said the people voted for it. Literally, that's what happened. Now, folks, lawyers don't have the right to survey anything. That falls under the post office <laughs> because that's a declaration and those are absolute. There was no declaration to move the meets and bounds. There was no declaration to, uh, to alter or amend state constitutions. None whatsoever. So they even bypassed the post office. Yeah, I mean, you talk about living in a fiction. <laughs> you know, everything, everything is a hall of mirrors. Right. So when they delivered you to the U.S. Constitution, that literally doesn't exist. There's no writing on it. It's just U.S. Constitution title, no articles, no nothing. They made you stateless under the Declaration of Interdependence. And when you became stateless, and we keep saying that over and over again, we just never went in to explain it. Because you have to understand, and it's walk in somebody's shoes in their line of discovery to understand what happened. So we had to do 20 programs uh, of the T-Row show to explain it from start to finish. And this is what we went through for seven years. And it absolutely 100% sucked. It was 16 to 18 hours a day for years, not just months, not just weeks, years. And it was one thing after another, after another. That's why we had people coming and going because the pressure was so high that it was hard to get along with people. It was hard to do these things and they couldn't keep up. Yeah, there can be moments where there's a lot of pressure. Yeah, where everybody's yelling at each other or something like that, you know. But you just got to get over it. Mm -hmm. Actually, before the, commu the uh, committee got started, it was called the boiler room just because it was just <laughs> high pressure, you know. Oh, it was horrible. It sucked. 
it was a it was a horrible atmosphere uh, because everybody was tired, and we were moving and we were moving and moving and we had to move as fast as we possibly could. And by the way, the government of the United States of America existed before the reign of the heavens was rediscovered. Another thing, no one bought the post office of the postmaster general of the United States. No one bought that. The, uh, there was no auction. Nothing existed. There was no bankruptcy auction. Nothing. I think I was accused of that. I was in the military, folks. I was in, I was in high school at the, around the time, and then I ended up in the military. I was in Germany. There, there was no auction. Nobody bought anything. Complete fabrication. Complete and total lie. They just can't believe that someone would literally go and claim the original general post office. That is unfathomable pe to people. Because they're told that the USPS used to be the general post office because they come out and say, well, we claim Benjamin Franklin as our as our uh, 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 as as in the line of our uh, succession of our postmaster generals, and it's a total lie, complete fabrication. It never happens. Fake news. George Washington tried to get rid of Ebenezer Hazard and wouldn't accept him at all, and then created the Postal Department. Completely abandoned the General Post Office. He abandoned your country. And he's heralded every day as some kind of freaking hero. Well, that's right. He's that's why he's on the money. I often wonder. That's is. It, I wonder if that's a secret bitch slap. You know, these guys, these elitist globalists, put on the, uh, you know, the quote founding fathers on the money. Well, they put Jackson on there too, and he was against central banks, so I don't know. <laughs> well, so they mix some lies with the truth, right? Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> yeah how, exactly. That's how you have to do it exactly. So they got ninety percent of it's a lie. They got to put ten percent of the truth in there in order to, to, to sell the lie. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Continental Army, not a standing army. It's set up the way it was intended to be set up, which was every individual. So when, uh, when uh, 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 somebody who declares residency, they turn 18, they're brought into the military, they're trained. We're going we're gonna to set it up to where they can, we can train them through basic training. And then they, they go home. And they go and certify themselves every year for shooting and everything, make sure their skills are still up to uh, the speed. And they go home. It's not an issue. It's awesome to have the Continental Army or uh, folks in the Continental Army all around you. It's a very safe place to be. Talk about a neighborhood watch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, but they don't swear by the Constitution, so. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know I did when I was in the military. I don't think it did me any good, but. <laughs> so, you, you know what, what Trump will do? If, if Trump does this, I'll have a little faith in the guy. If he completely removes probation, he knows that wasn't right. Anybody that does anything, they all know it isn't right. If you're not going to actually fix the problems that you have, then, it, you know, it, you, you're you full of it until you actually start fixing the problems. If they want a, 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 a judge in the District of the United States, that's fine. We don't have any issues with that. We have our own judges. We all elected them. We don't need those, okay? But if they want to do that, and they really want to fix things, start calling them a, a district uh, of the United States or a, 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 not a district court judge, um, <clears throat> but it's a, uh, he's what they call a federal judge in the, in the district of the United States, not the, not the United States district. The 1952 Immigration Act is freaking hilarious, okay? So in the beginning, they start saying that according to article this, this, and this, Congress has the authority to uh, uh, to write immigration legislation, the U.S. Congress. No, it doesn't. It was the Congress of the United States that had that authority, not a U.S. Congress. And I just look at it, you just shake your head. It's like, man, they sold this to people. It's absolutely amazing how much they sold, how much load of crap that was sold to them. 
and they bought it, hook, line, and sinker. Then you've got people coming on calls. This is the funny part. You have people coming on calls, <clears throat> and they're all getting together, and they're all talking and everything. And in order to prove their point, they start quoting cases under the United States Congress, which has no standing whatsoever. But then they turn around and say, it's a corporation and it sucks. And it has no standing. It's de facto. Well, it's de facto. Why are you quoting their cases? It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, that happens a lot. Well, it just it just shows what flag you fly under. That's it. That means you stand under their law. If you're if you're if you're using their law against them, then you stand under their law, under their law. They're basically just using make believe rules of a make believe entity. And if you have no law, if you have no uh, constitution. If you have nothing, you're stateless. Declaration of Interdependence, 1976, was when you were trafficked to a stateless position. It has nothing to do with all cap name. It has nothing to do with this or that. It's, it is what it is. Get past the all cap name argument and understand what declarations are. They're orders for delivery. For the post office to deliver something. We have stamps. All right. General post office has stamps. They're orders for delivery. Your resident declarations. Orders for delivery. It's mapped. And then this is what we do. Okay. It goes over to the office of the registrar. The registrar sends out documents that they need. Do you have a birth certificate? Do you have this? Do you have that? We're trying to validate the order to back up the resident declaration. We had one guy come in, I don't feel comfortable with, it was you, Tom, it came to you. I don't feel comfortable giving you my birth certificate, like we care, right? Yeah, like we're gonna use it to monetize. Yeah. <laughs> and all we're trying to do is validate that his, his declaration of residency and create an, an evidence file for him. That's all we were doing. And we had to show that he was uh, uh, that he was born in a trafficked position or a situation. That's why the birth certificates are worthless, folks. They're they're not worth anything because it was done under a human trafficking condition. It's like getting a document from your kidnappers. That's what they do. They kidnap you, and then write up documents to prove that. You were not kidnapped to cover the kidnap. Right. <laughs> and you wonder why they, they, they sit there and validate them. Yep. Yeah, they come back. we got to validate the certificate. Why would you have to even validate a birth certificate? Seriously? Unless it wasn't validated in the first place or it wasn't valid in the first place. So you want to cover the Communist Party and their human trafficking. Yeah, we just got it authenticated. Now we get all kinds of money. <laughs> it's utterly ridiculous. And we're not here trying to make people sound like foolish. What we're trying to do is let you know you've got to think, man. Think. And when people that are thinking are helping you, you don't crap on them and start accusing them of fraud. Because those people that you're accusing of fraud that are not, can bury you. You join with the kidnappers when you validated your birth certificate against your own country. And we're not going to bring it up. We're going to have a lot of mercy because you don't understand. We get it. But don't sit there and start accusing people of something that have your back. You don't bite the hand that's trying to help you. Without even trying to, at the very least, verify the information that they're hearing. I mean, they don't even do that. It's just automatic denial. Yeah, they'll just take somebody's, some freaking idiot's word. The worst part is most of them are all traitors against their original country. Well, I'd have to say all of them, but. Well, that's why there's, there's room for redemption. That's called redemption. There's room for, and it comes from repentance, and it comes from all these things. We know where we came from. 
And if we didn't have pure hearts, we would have not have known any of this. We wouldn't be able to pick out the fraud. We wouldn't be able to do any of that stuff. If we had ill intentions, don't you think that somebody else would have came in and shoved us off that trail? Like the most high? I think so. I, I'm bewildered. Stunned is the better word. Uh, a couple times a year, that stuff just sort of presents itself or falls in our lap. And miraculous stuff. Insight, you know. I'm, I'm bewildered. I'm stunned by that. It, it, it's incredible. It's incredible. So, yeah, I agree with you 100%. If we were up to no good, this would have been, it would have disintegrated long ago. Absolutely. That's, that's natural law, folks. Natural law. If you're up to well, the, no good, it's going to fall. That's not to say that we haven't tried to throw in the towel a few times because we've gotten pretty fed up with people out there and what they do. Because we have actually come to a point where we almost threw in the towel. Really yeah. close. Because, really close. <laughs> because of the personal attacks for no damn reason. Personal attacks. Uh, you know, um, uh, uh, basically the Dutch coming in and lying about us. There's Dutch agents everywhere. Um, uh, Mossad uh, has some issues with that. Uh, you know, people just lying about you. Ruining your reputation, your, you know, and all this kind of stuff. And it's completely illegal. You can get your butt sued for it. That's why we put out that notice. Stop the slander now. We're going to start suing you. You keep slandering, we're going to sue you. That's it. We're done. Because if we had ill intentions, folks, that would have been a long time ago. Anything you're hearing is a basic lie. To it's keep all, you stateless. It's, yeah. It's to keep it's you under a stateless condition. So your captors are lying to you saying that the people that are that are pulling you out are fraud and this this doesn't have any standing well of course they're going to say that because they know the more people that find out what the hell they did they're going to jail and it's getting larger every month that's right we get resident declarations all week long all week long we get at least five or six a week uh, at least one a day we get people coming into the Continental Army, the ones that understand it, former military, stuff like that, people like that. That's grown quicker in the past two weeks than anything we've ever done. Because it's not a standing army. It's the right thing to do. And yet people know it and they feel it. And they also know, everyone in this country knows, whether they know it or not. And in, in other words, in the back of their mind, they know Islam is at war with you. And they know they're being invaded. You just won't, don't want to admit it because if you don't want to admit it, it's because you have to do something about it and you don't want to really want to do anything about it because it's easier to sit around and watch TV. Bingo. And have somebody else do it. Yeah. And then point a finger at the people that are actually doing something about it, calling them fraud. Oh, it's this. This is a crime. It's not a crime to protect your country and it's not a crime to defend your freedoms. Whoever says that they're going down for human rights violations because they are advocating for their captors, which are a communist regime that is completely against every principle of the law of nations and every principle of law itself. And we will try them. We don't care. I have no issues with that. We're take into tired of it. Huh? Take into consideration the fact that the police – the local law enforcement, the federal law enforcement, and everybody else cannot go into a mosque, but they can go into a church. They can't go into a mosque. Why can't they go into a mosque? Has Why? anyone ever questioned that? It's a freaking foreign country. Because it's a nation. It's a nation of Islam. And if you think, folks, you really got to watch this, okay? If you, if you have, and I'm not saying this, we have law enforcement friends. Okay, we've got connections all over the country with law enforcement uh, folks that really know what's going on. They just have the job. We get it. It's a job. Okay, and we know that there's a certain brotherhood in there. We're not against that. Okay, and we're not trying to pull your faith away from the police and, and the sheriffs. However, look at what happened in Texas. One man with an AK-47, one man 
shot six of them, wounded, uh, I think killed six police and wounded all the way up to 12, I believe. And those are the numbers. One man with one AK-47. Can you imagine if those police were attacked by 100 men? They would all be wiped out in a matter of five minutes. Now you understand the reality of why there's a non, uh, 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 not a standing army, but the Continental Army was brought back. You know what's going to happen, guys. You know it in your heart. Even the federal agents know it. Homeland Security knows it. The head of Homeland Security yesterday admitted he doesn't know how to get rid of or, or how to uh, deal with uh, homegrown terrorists. He doesn't know how to fix that. And that's likely, that's likely because he sees what's occurring, but he knows that their powers that be are making it happen. Right. So it's like, I'm stuck in the middle here. <laughs> so guess what? There's nobody on your side, folks. You're left on your own. Right, with the U.S. military pledge to the U.N. So and here we are trying to help you, and you're kicking us in the ass for it. Yep, kicking us in the teeth for it continental.army check it out folks you can go on there it's real it is really there the general post office really there this government really does exist northamericannationalparty.com go look at it you want a chapter in your state go go there join it get a hold of us we'll start a chapter if you're not a general postmaster then you start a chapter in your state we don't work for the CIA. I, don't, I didn't get that check, and I don't get that memo. Most of us are broke because we're fighting to get the national currency in, and it drains our resources. We do not, we're not, this government is not to be used as your personal weapon and vendetta against your perceived communist enemies in your state. You're not here to run from something or to use it to convert the government into your private weapon. It takes us a while to get things cleared up and straightened out. It takes a while, but that's coming from our own personal resources. We're not being funded by anybody. And we're trying to help as many people as we can and, you know, losing focus on one particular case because somebody thinks that they're their only they're the only person in this world you know that that drains time energy all these resources and we're, we're all we're trying to do is just help people as many as we can when there at one time uh we all had uh well we had holy underwear no oh yeah <laughs> no one could afford underwear no joke they couldn't afford socks had holy socks all over the place. I was finally able to get some underwear about two months ago. That's weird. You don't really need to know that. But that's the reality of things. So when you have somebody coming out, don't support, don't support. They need to get rid of this. This is criminal, blah, blah, blah. That source is off their rocker and they're crazy. They have no idea what's going on in the real world. They have never spoken about Islam being here. They never even cried out about it. Those people do not have your best interest at heart. Within three years, the way things are going right now, if we don't turn it around now with a non-standing Continental Army that are ready to defend their country at any, t any moment, your women are going to be wearing a burqa because it's already a law in Deerfield, Michigan and other places around the country trying to bring Sharia law in. Got a quote for you. This is, out of, uh, uh, this is a quote with a Muslim woman in a picture. In my country, I am forced to keep my mouth shut. Women don't get a word, folks. So all you chicks out there that think that uh, you have some say in Islam, good luck with that. In my country, I am forced to keep my mouth shut. So here, I'm free to talk uh, uh, talk trash about this country in hopes it changes into a country where I am forced to keep my mouth shut. I think we can end it there. How about that? <laughs> yep. If you don't wake up now, 
and you don't smell the coffee and you stop listening to communists, you may have a chance. If you wake up now, your children may have a chance because your daughters are definitely going to be in burkas. And don't forget the genital uh, mutilation also. That is now being brought to this country. Yep. Texas just, uh, had a case just the other day. Yep, yep, exactly. I don't know if it, I, I don't recall it was in Texas, but uh, I did read an article the other day. Yep. Man and, and a woman. And here's a message to the communist. Okay, and this is coming from an individual that fought him in Afghanistan. We have a tape right on a, a Facebook page. You can listen to it. It's three minutes long. It only takes you three minutes away from your football game to listen to what this man has to say, who has experience front line. You're a good guy, and this is a message to your communists and the Illuminati folks. You're a good guy as long as you're giving Muslim stuff as long as you're supporting them and giving them money or you're armed, you're a good guy. They'll nice to you that all of a sudden they're moderate. It's like a freaking miracle. They're moderate. The second you stop giving them stuff and the second uh, you're not armed, you're an infidel and they're going to kill you unless you submit. And even if you submit to Islam, you're still second class because Islam is nothing more than the KKK on steroids. It's a, it's an Arab supremacist racist people that believe they're supreme over everyone else. And I got no issues with going on record with that. And they'll act violently to um, enforce that outlook. Absolutely. They don't look down at you because they're, they're, they, they're with Muhammad and Allah. They don't look down at you for that. They look down at you because you're not Arab. That's why yeah. they fight amongst each other all the time. Go ahead. What's that, that brings up another argument right there. If you look at um, the Moors, do you really think that they're going to think of you as an equal? No way in hell are they going to think of you as an equal. They're going to use you. They're going to use you and kick you to the curb and kill everyone around you. That's right. And how do we know that? Because that's what they do. They have a 1,700-year history of doing the same thing over and over again. It's not going to change. And to the feminists, you're not going to make an Arab man treat you equally. You're not going to convert him. He's going to put a burqa on your butt. He's going to have, once you can't have babies anymore, you obviously screwed somebody else and your head comes off in, in town. That's what happens. And if you think that Hillary's in your best interest with her speeches, where do you think she's getting her funding from? And so your message to the communists are, folks, you guys are the first to go down. They get rid of you first. So the Hillary's and the, and the Democratic Party and all those people and all the CNN, the only reason why CNN is still up is because they're advocating for Islam. Second Islam takes over, CNN is gone. They put their own in. Got Look that at right. what happened in Deerfield. They put all their own stores in. Go ahead, Stu. Sorry. No, I was just uh, confirming. Yeah, got that right. That, that's, that's how they work. <clears throat> and there's not one American flag hanging there. The first they all to go. have very nice vehicles, um, and they don't have anything else but all that nice stuff there. And they're saying, well, we're just going to create our own little state right over here. And then that'll start expanding. and It'll get worse and worse and worse. It doesn't go away. They don't quit. Nope. Go ahead, Stu. I know you're saying something. No, I, I, I actually wasn't. I was just confirming that. Uh, yeah, you're you're correct. They're gonna they'll take the um, direct supporters are the first to go because they know the most. <clears throat> so yeah, I agree with you. So the government of the United States of America, I know, supports France and what they're trying to do. They support England and what they're trying to do. 
they actually support we actually support uh what the um uh, uh the, the virginia company is trying to do which is protect the borders so we all have something in common we may have our differences but we all have something in common and that is a common enemy so we all need to start working together the apache even came to us uh, i think about six months ago but they don't trust anybody so it's it's uh um and, and they have a reason you know they don't it's they have their reasons but they don't trust anyone but the apache came to us and they asked us you know hey man we got islam coming here yeah we got a problem we all start gonna have to start coming together He's right. They, they, they do. So we're willing to will uh, to work with any organizations and companies and whatever it is. Uh, and with the general post office, we're not there to take you over. We're there to work with you as equals to come together for the common good of this country to preserve the light of freedom, real freedom, not BS freedom, real freedom. So we support the states in their open carry, what they're trying to do. We support them and, uh, you know, if they're trying to get or ban Sharia law, which they really need to invalidate it, but if they want to ban it, that's fine. We're in support of that. We're not trying to stop that at all. And uh, that's it. So we went over a little bit. So thank you for listening to the T-Row Show, folks. Pass this around. This is really what's going on uh, with us and what we're all about. And the reason why you're not seeing us is because we're all spread out all over the country and di different everywhere. Okay. So yeah, it's, it's hard. We all would all love to come together and actually, you know, see each other in, in flesh and shake each other's hands, hugs, whatever. Hey guys, how you doing? And all that. And one day we're going to make that happen. But right now it just hasn't happened. Maybe when we get the continental dollar moving and everything else, we'll be able to afford a building. Everybody can come to a building and see us face to face. And they'll know just by looking at us. We're not bad people. So thanks for listening to T-Row Show. Say goodbye, guys. Good afternoon, folks. Thanks for listening. Talk to you next week. Thank you for hearing us out.